Coming up on Network Africa. Happy Independence Day, Nigeria. It's a beautiful display of culture and fanfare that's marking this year's independence as the country celebrates its 61st anniversary. Well, President Muhammad Buhari congratulates Nigerians as he addresses various issues in the country. Goodwill messages also from envoys in diaspora. Nigerians in South Africa also joined the rest of the nation to mark the nation's 61st Independence Day. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Layo Adegoke. Nigerians are celebrating today to mark 61 years after the country gained independence from Britain. Nigeria became an independent country with the Commonwealth on October 1st, 1960, initially known as the Federation of Nigeria. And in 1963, the constitution was amended and the country was declared the Federal Republic of Nigeria, with Namdi Azikiwe, previously Governor General, as the first president. President. Independence Day is an official national holiday observed by the public sector and most private businesses with festivities beginning with the President's address the people before parade by the armed forces. There are also celebrations by different state governments. Well, President Muhammad Buhari says high-profile individuals, including a member of National Assembly, are financing secessionist leaders like Namdi Kanu and Sunday Igboho in his nationwide broadcast to mark the nation's 61st independence anniversary. President Buhari says his administration is vigorously pursuing the financiers whom he did not name. He adds that his government would continue to work on dialogue-based solutions to address legitimate grievances. In the face of challenges confronting the country, President Muhammad Buhari used the occasion of the nation's 61st independence anniversary to rally Nigerians to have a positive outlook and determination to make Nigeria a peaceful and prosperous nation. Through words or action. In the broadcast, he tries to highlight some of the achievements of his administration in infrastructure development while directing the Ministry of Agriculture to address the looming food crisis in the country. As our food production capacity has increased, food prices have been going up due to artificial shortages created by middlemen who have been buying and holding these essential commodities for profiteering. To address this, I am hereby directing the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development to rehabilitate the National Food Reserve Agency and also work with security agencies, the Nigerian Commodity Exchange, and the National Assembly to find a lasting solution to these disruptive and unpatriotic holding activities. This week, the National Assembly asked the president to take steps to address the security situation in the country, especially the activities of bandits. But President Buhari is concerned about the high-profile Nigerians behind some secessionists. We shall continue to work on dialogue-based solutions to address legitimate grievances. But we remain ready to take decisive actions against secessionist agitators and their sponsors who threaten our national security. The recent arrests of Namdi Kanu and Sande Adeyemo and the ongoing investigations being conducted have revealed certain high-profile financiers behind these individuals. We are vigorously pursuing these financiers, including one identified as a serving member of the National Assembly. The president also explains the conditions for lifting the ban on the microblogging site Twitter. Following the suspension of Twitter operations, Twitter Incorporated reached out to the federal government of Nigeria to resolve the impasse. 
Following the extensive engagements, the issues are being addressed and I have directed that the suspension be lifted, but only if the conditions are met to allow our citizens continue to use the platform. President Buhari remains confident that his administration's target of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years is achievable, albeit in the face of the high inflation rate and rising unemployment figure. Nigerians in South Africa are joining those at home to mark the nation's 61st Independence Day. Now, not too much celebratory events have been lined up owing to the COVID-19 pandemic, but some of the people Channel Television spoke with also cited what they refer to as the worrisome developments back home. For some, the fact that Nigeria still stands as one nation is worth celebrating. We spoke to a sociologist and head of the School of Social Sciences of the Independent Institute of Education, South Africa, Dr. Alice Asikitpi, on the Nigeria he sees today and the Nigeria he wishes to see going forward. What I see is, is a lot of um, despondency, a lot of confusion. Um, Nigeria is at the brink of, of its precipice. Um, we are at the brink of chaos, which we cannot begin to fathom the depth of, of which um, is, going to, is going to lead to. Um, that is the saddest part of it all, because uh, we had thought that um, this government would have arrested that situation when it came on board in 2015, when we have the incipients of um, these kidnappings and so on, that it was not done. And then now we begin to see so much polarization, so much ethnic cleavages. Um, it, for me, it's, it's the beginning of a very, very disastrous end, in my opinion, except there is some intervention somewhere. Um, people who are in positions of authority, political leaders, make utterances that are unguarded, utterances that fuel the problems that uh, we are trying to, to overcome. Um, so if some people have taken it upon themselves to say that uh, they must perpetually rule, even though we have not seen what they have done right, um, then it begs the question if indeed Nigerians should stay together as a political and geopolitical entity. A country where the political gladiators must shit their daggers, they must, they must, they must humble themselves to say that um, we are not superior to any other, um, the country belongs to everyone, and we want to, we are trying to see how we can forge an inclusive um, society where everyone will have that important trust, meant, but more importantly, that patriotism to say that we are proud to be called Nigerians, not First of all, that we are proud to be called our ethnic groups, but we are, first of all, we are proud to be called Nigerians. If we can have this type of playground where no one is more important than the other, and then deep down we say, we let us pull our resources together as a nation to advance the country, then I will be the happiest person, really. Well, goodwill messages are pouring in, congratulating Nigeria on its 61st independence. Nigeria's ambassador, Abubakar Moriki Husseini, is congratulating His Excellency President Muhammadu Buhari, the government and the people of Nigeria, and also Nigerians residing in Japan. In a statement released, Ambassador Husseini notes that today also marks the 61st anniversary of Nigeria-Japan diplomatic relations. 
It is also special to him because it marks 100 days of his stewardship in Japan as the new head of mission in the embassy. Well, over in Qatar, Ambassador Yakubu Abdullahi Ahmed is joining millions of Nigerians in the diaspora to wish the government and people of Nigeria a happy 61st independence anniversary. According to a statement issued by the Nigerian embassy in Doha, Ambassador Ahmed, in his Independence Day message, describes Nigeria as a unique nation, blessed with abundant human and natural resources that has continued to provide leadership at the global stage, which gives a sense of pride to the black man. He is calling on Nigerians to demonstrate love, peace and unity in their resolve to take the country to greater heights. He also used the occasion to commend the cordial relations between Nigeria and Qatar. Well, Nigeria's president of the Senate, Senator Ahmed Lawan, has restated the Assembly's commitment to the welfare and well-being of Nigerians living anywhere in the diaspora. The Senate president stated this during the official presentation of a compendium entitled Plus 600 Diaspora Icons at 60 by Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa, who's the chairman of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. Mr. Lawan commended the doggedness, passion and determination of the NITCOM boss in bringing diaspora issues to the front burner right from her days in the parliament and now as the NITCOM chairman. On diaspora voting, Senator Lawan is expressing optimism that Nigerians anywhere in the world will soon freely exercise their franchise once INEC is through with the bill. We came to see you, sir, is to officially present to you this publication that we call Plus 600 Diaspora Icons at 60. We just felt that um, as we mark 60 years as a nation, it, it was just like a random thing with particularly the younger team in the commission, that we always hear about the negatives. Now we have a commission, what do we do about the positives? And we thought we should document it. So I'm proud to tell you that if you go through this compendium, you'll be proud to be a Nigerian, because we just couldn't stop. This compendium, Your Excellency, sir, is, um, uh, like I said, made up of over 600 excellent stories. I'm not just of normal people, you know, exceptional people that are Nigerians. And I'm proud to say that the young men, not the old ones, the young men and women, on this team actually put this compendium together. It was a lot of work, a whole lot of work, but I'm glad they're able to do it. We, we expect that something you have in your library is a compendium that should be on your coffee table, and it's a compendium everyone should be proud of. It's our duty as a nation to protect Nigerians wherever they are in this world. Uh, in fact, even when they are wrong, we are supposed to be there to give them that support uh, if they have to face uh, the legal battles that they might have found themselves in. We still have a responsibility as a country uh, to present some kind of support, but we have to work hard to ensure that those bad acts uh, are not encouraged in any way to go and uh, spoil the name of this country and in the process get themselves uh, into some difficult situations. But we must leave no country uh, in doubt that we stand for our citizens wherever they are. And in whatever condition or situation they are, we have to show that they, they, they are really uh, Nigerians and their, their country will stand in for them. So I believe that we have to work uh, to ensure that we do that together as well. Uh, National Assembly through legislation uh, could do a lot to empower the entire of government, especially agencies like yours, that need to be in constant, uh, constant touch with Nigerians outside the shores of Nigeria. Still to come on the program. South Africa moves to level one COVID-19 restrictions and would also give you more stories outside Nigeria. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the program. We're still celebrating Nigeria's independence, but let's check out some other stories outside the country. Guinea's military leader, Cornel Mamadi Dumbuya, has been sworn in as the interim president at the presidential palace in Conakry. The ceremony was attended by those who had been invited only 
Colonel Dumbuya led the coup that ousted President Alpha Conde early last month. Now he's expected to form a government in the coming weeks. At age 41, the military leader will become Africa's second youngest head of state. The youngest being Mali's Colonel Asimi Goita, who's 38, that led a coup against President Ibrahim Keita. Colonel Dumbuya says his soldiers had seized power because they wanted to end rampant corruption, human rights abuses and mismanagement in the country. The U.S. and the U.K. are the latest nations to condemn Ethiopia's decision to expel seven senior United Nations officials amid growing international condemnation. Ethiopia accuses the U.N. of meddling in the country's internal affairs, which the U.N. has denied. Now, Washington has said it condemns in the strongest possible terms the expulsion of the U.N. officials, who include the heads of the U.N. Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs and the head of the U.N. Children's Fund in Ethiopia. The UK government has also called for the decision to be reversed with immediate effect. Ethiopian authorities have not provided details to support their claims of meddling, but the expulsions came after the UN aid chief, Martin Griffiths, raised concerns about a de facto blockade of aid to the war-torn region of Tigray. The head of the World Bank says Sudan is making progress as it reconnects with the global economy. However, patience is needed as the country seeks to tackle shortages and attract investment. World Bank President David Malpass made this known during a visit to Khartoum. Sudan's economy has been mired in a crisis that led to the overthrow of former leader Omar al-Bashir in 2019 and has continued since shortages of fuel and of bread are, 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 uh, have, have improved substantially. And I think there can also be improvement on the electricity side. Uh, it's going to mean higher prices uh, at, 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 at the right time as the reforms are put forward. But that brings in more supply, and that can really help uh, Sudan have more access. <laughs> Well, some coronavirus stories now. Mauritius has reopened its border to fully vaccinated tourists after being closed for 16 months. Arriving tourists are being welcomed by the local Sega dancers at main airport where they must show a negative COVID-19 test result. No movement restrictions will be imposed on vaccinated visitors. Well, tourism is a big pillar of the Mauritian economy and the pandemic saw many hotels closed for months while others were used as quarantine centers. The number of arriving tourists is still low and hotels are saying less than 40% of the rooms are booked. The island had reported an increase in COVID-19 deaths in previous months, but the government accelerated its vaccination campaign that has seen more than 850,000 of the 1.3 million population vaccinated. Students aged between 15 and 17 years have started receiving the jab in their learning institutions. South Africa has loosened lockdown restrictions from adjusted level 2 to 1 as the third COVID-19 surge has been officially declared over. Speaking to the nation on Thursday night, President Ramaphosa announced that the curfew in place is now from midnight to 4 a.m. Restaurants can now stay open till 11 p.m. and numbers for indoor meetings have increased to 750 while outdoors is 2,000. Here's more to talk to you about four matters. President Cyril Ramaphosa's Thursday night address covered four major areas. Progress on the national vaccination campaign, measures to open up the economy further, the national vaccination certificate issue, and engagements to remove South Africa from the United Kingdom's COVID-19 red list, now that the country is officially over the COVID third wave. Following the meetings of the National Coronavirus Command Council and the President's Coordinating Committee, Cabinet has decided to move South Africa from Adjusted Level 2 to Adjusted Alert Level 1. He renewed his appeal for more people to get vaccinated as he personally leads the country on a nationwide vaccination drive called Vuma Weekends, starting this weekend. So far, 17.5 million people have taken the jab and 8.6 million fully. 
The target is to have 70% of the adult population fully vaccinated by the end of the year. That's an additional 16 million people. And now the vaccination certificate story is official. Our approach on this matter is informed by the World Health Organization's guidelines and is in line with international best practice. Streamlining and standardizing proof of vaccination will also go a long way towards getting a number of international travel restrictions both from and into our country eased. South Africa remains on the UK's COVID-19 red list and the country is not happy about it. There have been engagements between scientists from both countries, but no resolution is still on the cards. South Africa's largest tourism numbers come from the United Kingdom as South Africa's summer season begins this month. President Ramaphosa says he has also had a telephone conversation with the UK's Prime Minister Boris Johnson on this. I put South Africa's case to him, which he understood very well. And we both agreed that decisions of this nature should be informed by science and we are both hopeful of a positive outcome when the issue comes up for review in the coming days by their scientists. As more business sectors heave a sigh of relief more than others with the latest ease of measures, the president says to those who are demanding an end to the national state of disaster and lockdown restrictions that government remains guided by the scientists who still advise that caution should still be the watchword. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. We're still in celebration mode. Nigeria is 61. Let's now speak to a Nigerian in diaspora about what they make you know, of this year's Independence Day. Kizito Obiora is a neighbor in Ghana. He's the first national vice president, Nigeria Union of Traders Association in the country. Thank you for speaking to us and happy Independence Day to you. Well, you've been in the diaspora for some years now. What's the assessment of Nigeria on this 61st Independence Day? There is no doubt that Nigeria is a great country. Uh, at 61, uh, with the little knowledge I have, Nigeria has achieved a lot. Though uh, today, I know that as a country, we are facing a lot of challenges, especially in terms of security and other economic crises. But that does not mean that Nigeria is a failure. Nigeria is a great country, and I'm also a proud, I'm, I'm very proud to be a Nigerian. In Ghana here, I'm very, very sure that the leadership from our, uh, uh, from our high commissioner here, the leadership over there, they are doing their best to protect their citizens here in Ghana. For at least the little experience I have, I can say that more than a decade now, I've been in executive, I've been in, a, in executive arm of the community. And the, all the, both the past ambassadors and the current ones, they are doing their best to protect Nigerians here in Ghana. So I believe if others are doing the same thing in, uh, in other countries, I think as a Nigerian, we, we will see something to say, yes, I'm proud to be a Nigerian. I'm proud to be a Nigerian. I think as a Nigerian, we are doing great. Well, as we celebrate now, how are you and the diaspora community celebrating in Accra? Yeah, we in diaspora, somebody like me, I'm very proud to be a Nigerian. Uh, as far as living in diaspora is concerned, there's a lot of challenges, especially in Ghana here, where we are facing weak traders, are facing a lot of crisis. But I believe that in the, maybe through the support of our government and our high commissioner here, at least we are having a, a lot of relief. I believe maybe if not because of their support, us maybe by now i don't think that we can even be here doing business at all but at least with their support and they're hard working the Ghana government is listening to us today uh, and uh, i believe we're having a lot of we have achieved a lot we have gone very very far with the government so i think with this alone i can say personal as a trader residing in diaspora that I'm very proud to I'm I'm very proud to be a Nigerian. So I believe that the government are doing their best. 
All right, then. Thank you so much, Kizito Obera in Ghana. Well, as we end the program today, as we end the program today, let's take you back to the colorful and beautiful parade that took place at the Eagle Square in Abuja right after President Muhammad Buhari's speech. Well, President Buhari observed the march past performed by members of the armed forces, the police and other paramilitary agencies. The event was also witnessed by service and security chiefs and members of the diplomatic corps, former We appreciate it most sincerely. The gun salute is a form of saluting. Saluting is a military tradition used to accord respect or honor the dignity. Generally, saluting is done using hand sword. Well, former Vice President Namadi Sambo, the Senate President Ahmed Lawan, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Miller, Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tanko, Cabinet Ministers and other personalities also attended the colorful event held strictly in compliance with the COVID-19 protocols. Well, happy Independence Day to Nigeria once again. That's it on Network Africa for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Layo Adigoki.